once he calms down, of course. Is that... Are you... My goodness, is that very you? Elias Nadal, I presume. In the flesh. Welcome back, Quatar. I'm afraid your house is not what it used to be like. I'm not here to revisit my ostensible childhood home, or watch any slides full of apparent memories. I see, I see. So, you've come here to find out the truth. The truth about yourself. I didn't have a choice. I came here from Germany, and instead of going to Liberty Island, I was goaded into coming here, and I hope it's gonna pay off. It will. Here, take this nano key. It opens the black hatch in the latest vest room, which in turn has the key to a room which contains everything you'll need to know. Uh, in my pockets, of course. I guess that works out too. Novash, I'll be waiting here. Novash, waiting here. Let's see, is there something that happens right now, or is it after I visit the room and uh, return? Guess it's after the room. This. Oh, yeah. He just kind of plainly said it. <clears throat> Gotta get this key first. If I can... There we go. That could definitely use an upgrade, regardless of what the new augmentations that I've not currently got are. Novash, I'll be waiting here. I've just been to my old room. Or that is, Office Cutter's old room. Oy, I'm sorry you had to find out the truth this way. Turns out I was never the real Wesley Cutter to begin with. It's weird. Though, many of the things start to make sense now. How I got all those years messed up. All this time. I had never actually put much thought into thinking about my past. Quite a feat for MJ-12. I was recruited by MJ-12 into one of the various nano-augmentation projects over ten years ago. It was a really shady business. My supervisor didn't even bother telling me his name. Number one? Wow, uncanny. Y yeah, uh, that's what we had to call him. He was the one who gave me the task of finding a suitable test body for his nano-augmentation experiment. He gave me a checklist of the qualities he wanted. Through my sources, I discovered the recently deceased NYPD officer Wesley Carter. The experiment was called Project 
Matt Ingram. Referring to everyone's expectations about the project itself? Quite possibly. They had other projects going on at the same time, some even dating back to the 2020s. They've probably been terminated by now. And all the requirements were there in one nifty package? Officer Kata was certainly a remarkable person, as far as the personality and physical health were concerned. I really came to admire his qualities. We couldn't use his body though, so we had to grow a new one. Um, you, from scratch. You know, test tube, insemination, womb with a view, things like that. And just getting to the first step took nearly a decade of research. About a year and a half ago, I had a conversation with number one. Didn't expect anything overtly special, but at the end, he started talking about retirement benefits and well, I assumed they were just going to put a bullet in my head. Instead, they gave me this estate. Your gestation process finished at one of MJ-12's top secret labs, where I was never granted clearance. Judging from what I'd read about your career, you're probably only six months old. Really? So all this time I haven't even been a real adult human being? The bouncers at Farishi might have been interested in that. Well, technically you are one of those things. We wouldn't be having this conversation if you weren't real. Your growth into a adulthood was accelerated, but all things considered, it seems to have worked out just as planned. And for that matter, I don't think you look like a greaser, a uh, Kakian. Sounds like a case of semantics to me. So, MJ-12 created me and kicked you out before you could see the end of the project. More or less. It felt like a very sweet deal. Now, when the gang members came in about half a year ago and locked me up in the cell, well... Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think there had to be MJ-12 involvement in there somewhere. It's interesting how perfectly ordinary run-of-the-mill events suddenly have to have a near-mythical conspiracy club's hand hovering above them. Maybe MJ-12 is solely at fault when you consider how all the cops are corrupt and allied with the gangbangers. Or maybe it was a shady group of bankers that came before them. They took all the effort in the world to create the circumstances for what? Creating illusions after another for a six-month-old cracked secret spy agent? So there you were at the NYPD morgue, picking out bodies for your human guinea pig projects. In the following ten years, you must have had little meetings from time to time, wondering if he came to UNACO from the CIA or the FBI, or out of space? You put in all of those details, but when someone actually asked him a simple question like how old he was, he couldn't even give a proper answer? And you sent that guy to Hong Kong of all places? Well, I guess. It's rather unlikely, but... I've heard quite a lot of doublespeak in my rather short laugh. Yet it would still remain correct if I had been Wesley Cutter for 36 years now. I think it's amazing how both Exva and MJ-12 have put up such magnificent ruses on me. Illusions of free choice and agency in walled cities. Doors that can be picked are blown up next to doors that will stand anything. The foundation of my existence is based on opportunism and pretentious old men playing at running the world. Billions of dollars have been used to create a guy who can flip a light switch with his head, but who still at times somehow manages to momentarily see what's behind solid walls due to glitches in whatever neurological vision construct you came up within. What? A steel bunker hidden under a desert? A cinder block under Liberty Island, actually. Nifty. Agent Ingram, I understand the dilemma you've been forced to face all of a sudden, but keep in mind that none of us can affect the conditions of our existence. You might not have an age advantage, but I can hear that your mind merit is working far beyond their expectations. And there are other advantages. Both MJ-12 and Exva are afraid of what you can do against them. 
Did you know that MJ-12 possesses the means to terminate your life at will? At the push of a button, they can kill you in 24 hours. You would be showing severe symptoms right now if that were the case. What? Are you saying that for some logic-defying reason, they haven't bothered using it yet? Perhaps they lost the remote control? It was created as a safety mechanism. For them, of course. But who knows what the exact circumstances are. But whenever there's turmoil within NJ-12's inner circle, the consequences are detrimental to everyone else. This time you have, albeit likely inadvertently, managed to take advantage of a glaring flaw in their master plan. But I've got to admit, I really am surprised why they haven't activated your kill switch yet. Whatever the circumstances are, it's clear that both MJ-12 and x are planning to abuse nanotechnological advances for sinister goals. Fighting them is a chance I must take to prove the worth of my existence to myself. On the behalf of the Illuminati, I'm pleased to hear that you've realized the potential we have in bringing down MJ-12 and x -Fer. We'll certainly make tremendous progress once we meet. Watch yourself. A heavily armed guy just entered the estate. Good speed, Agent. Good speed, Agent. Hey, it looks like the reports are accurate. Thought you could add forever, Agent Ingram? From a face like that, sure. You must be Novakova's hire. Yeah, nice job breaking into other people's apartments. Do you really think all the things you've done with that Illuminati slag of yours have contributed to a better society? Look, my gauge for philosophical amusements is full for today. Well, now, I'm not one to amuse dead people with needless blabbering, so... I'm gonna spell the situation out for you direct, like. Exfa is done with you. Forever. They already told me that. Not impressed. So long, Agent Ingram. Weapon three! Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. Ah! God! 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 Except for the, the uh, misclick that led to my death. Okay, can't pick up the lockpick. Whatever. I've got everything I need here. I just need to get to that office exit area and uh, get to the chopper. You ready to go? Let's go. Up on. And, for what it's worth, Agent Ingram, I wish things could have been different. I appreciate that. Agent Ingram, welcome to Woodfiber. Mr. Stafford will be pleased to finally meet you. Go down the ladder, and the elevator in the adjoining room will take you to level one. Mr. Stafford's offices are on the other side of the level. Thanks for the info. 
Mr. Stafford is waiting for Well, that could be dangerous. Should grab all the bio cells. Kind of funny how this one <clears throat> sword that you find near the beginning of the game is the only melee weapon you really ever need, other than maybe a uh, non-lethal option. Mr. Seth. Yeah, and he can keep waiting because I've got exploration to do. So far, nothing that interesting. Fetna just got here. It's a pretty big area, if I remember right. Yeah, no need to pick these locks now. There'll be plenty of time to do it at a point Kenneth, where I'm not going what to is get the frequency? Hey, it's this guy again. I try to discover... A little something to make me sweeter. Oh, baby, refrain from breaking my heart. That song, it's like a virus. Kenneth, what is the frequency? So what is that guy supposed to be, other than an idiot? Pleasure to meet you, Agent. I do hope you can help us with our mission. Yeah, he's hoping we can do a lot more than nothing. Yes. Mr. Stafford is involved in many different projects with the goal of common good in mind. As soon as deformities like Exfa and MJ-12 are out of the picture, we can restore the rightful system that took millennia to develop. Interesting. I think I saw one of those grey creatures in Berlin. It is not surprising that Exfa has managed to get a hold of one of the specimens as well. An interesting experiment, no doubt. It seems like everyone's involved in poking and prodding things in a lab these days. And not to limit to just things, of course. Are you insinuating something? Hard to merely just insinuate after you've taken a look at the blue-skinned fellow over there. The synthetic from a crown we discovered in Scandinavia accidentally got into his system. We've done our best to prevent any further advancement of the process. I wonder how he was around to get into his body in the first place. This stuff isn't that far off from what I saw in Berlin. I believe Mr. Stafford is waiting for you, Agent Ingram. Don't keep him waiting. He really is on his way to full recovery. Luckily, I'm trying to make anyone his princess. Don't keep Mr. Stafford waiting. I try to discover a little something. Let's get out of here. Get this stupid insanity out of my way. Mr. S. Yep. Not much else choice in terms of where to go. Although there is this. Defense system or energy shield? Hmm. Well, this is useful. Full health. Just in case there's more fire later on. Yeah, looks like we've uh, reached our destination. A pleasure to meet you, Agent Ingram. I hope Agent is still fine to use. It's like my real first name. I guess you've heard that for most of your life. But you don't have to work for Yanako to use that title. You've certainly shown that you can act as an agent of justice against those who hold the world hostage. So with the Illuminati in power, I suppose it's Stockholm Syndrome? There's a key difference in the way we treat our partners. 
The most effective partnerships come from mutual necessity, and as time has gone by, MJ-12 has eliminated the concept of partnership from their modus operandi. And the Illuminati and people being manipulated by the arms of secret organizations form an effective partnership? Admittedly, we certainly have made several mistakes in the past, such as paving the way for the creation of entities like MJ-12 and Exfer. We have put a lot of thought into this during our exile. I've been in contact with Morgan Everett, the leader of the Illuminati, and it appears we are facing a real crisis from two fronts, and we must concentrate our efforts on eliminating them both. Everett? Yet another code name? Even then it would not be a unique concept to MJ-12 or the Illuminati agent. Do continue. Thank you. The extent of MJ-12's nano-augmentation project goes far beyond the concept of employing superhuman-like agents in trench coats all over the world. The technology that has brought your abilities as well as yourself to life is planned for far more nefarious goals. Obviously involving subjugating the world even further? I'm talking about extermination, Agent. MJ-12 is planning to use their nanotechnological advances into creating a devastating global disease to which only they hold the cure. What would an organization holding most of the world under its control gain from plunging it into further chaos? In desperation, people resort to aggressive methods to gain what they want. When violence has been exhausted, the desperation ascends to another level, and they will beg for the people in power to save them. Possibly. But at any rate, MJ-12 is seriously planning to go through with such a plan? And so is Exfa. You see, through their traditional industrial espionage, they've realized exactly the same things as MJ-12 has. Former MJ-12 scientists have formed their own groups in the US, but some have outright defected to Exfa, and with their contribution to Exfa's extant research, now both organizations are fully aware that by changing the structure of the nanomachines that enable your augmentations, they can be turned into fatal nanoagents. From what I've understood, Exfa is not anywhere near MJ-12 in terms of global or even domestic control. Exactly. However, what Exfa lacks in global influence, it makes up for with their missile technology. Don't forget that the company spawned from the Soviet military. Recent conflicts have seriously damaged the power the US used to wield in the world, effectively bringing down its superpower status. All the while, Exfa has been able to research and build highly advanced missiles, after taking over a region that no one really cared about before. Exfa might possess accurate and devastating missiles, but I doubt that other nations would really abandon the merry cause of mutually assured destruction for our sake. Which is where the nanovirus comes in. Missiles might be intercepted and their capacity at wreaking havoc would then decrease, but effectively built nanoagents would spread fast and indiscriminately even then. Exfa being on its way to possess the capability to launch these infused warheads all over the world in mere moments, not to mention launching infantry that's immune to all the negative effects, has undoubtedly caught MJ-12 off guard. Gee. Thanks for stealing our idea. Precisely. But all things considered, the situation is still not that simple. If not before, MJ-12 must now be aware of all Exfa's missile silos in Far Eastern Russia, and reports have come in from our agents that they have increased their surveillance over the area. After investigating hundreds of old Illuminati documents from the 20th century, I found evidence of a prestigious military research station called Dynamine Station, most likely located somewhere in the Arctic Ocean. Elaborate bases in the Arctic Ocean have worked so well before. Exfa was created in the 1960s as a military R&D group within the Soviet Ministry of Defense. When the turmoil of reforms started in the mid-1980s, Alexei's grandfather, Gennady Novikov, took advantage of the situation and essentially performed a coup against the Illuminati and began transferring Exfa's assets into the Russian Far East where the Illuminati's influence was weaker. His actions were crucial in ending our power in Russia, leaving us longing for an eventual return. So Exfa separated from the Illuminati even before MJ-12 got the same idea? More or less. After the Illuminati was driven out of the country, it entered a state of uncertainty from which only Exfa has majorly succeeded in breaking out. They concentrated on assuming control over the Pacific coast while destroying as much info on their assets as they could, including the location of Dynamine Station. However, the station itself fell into disuse and remained dormant until lately when Exfa has succeeded in gaining enough power to strike MJ-12. 
leading them into possessing the means to really screw the world with whatever they got in the station? Indeed. Thus far, the only real evidence that the station is still operational is an enigmatic shortwave radio station broadcasting a signal to expert agents all over the world. The signal is a modified version of the ones we used in the 1990s, and it can be only properly intercepted by an active Illuminati communications hub from the era. There are hundreds of former hubs all over the world, but the vast majority of them have been left in ruins and are of no use to our cause. MJ-12 has forgotten that the hubs ever existed? Major hubs like Area 51 and Mount Weather are under MJ-12's control now. As their takeover became clear, savvy Illuminati agents destroyed a vast amount of information related to the minor hubs so MJ-12 would have no other choice than to conduct a manual worldwide search for them. In a grotesque twist, MJ-12 needing the money for their nanotech projects comes to our advantage. It seems like they really need to get their act together if they seriously want to launch their worldwide virus. I have investigated tons of data gathered from old Illuminati hubs, but none of them have brought us closer to the exact location of Dynamine Station. However, we have strong hopes for the next hub that we're about to investigate, and that's where you come in, Agent Ingram. Another mission, eh? Afraid so. Our next target is a defunct hub that's located underneath the White House. It was built as a backup hub even from the beginning and was shut down in the early 2000s during various renovations. We have done our best to keep MJ-12 in the dark about its existence. Stuff like falsified blueprints and preventing any staff members getting any ideas on expanding or even renovating the sub-basements. So the people who control the US government can't even look into their own basement? Kind of ironic, considering what I've heard of their laboratories on Liberty Island. We can only throw around guesses why MJ-12 hasn't acted before. Illuminati agents have succeeded in eliminating certain Illuminati decryption keys from MJ-12's databases. What they would have used in a U.S. East Coast hub in the 1990s is mostly out of MJ-12's reach now. And as it so happens, I am an expert in decrypting Illuminati documents from the 20th century. Why would they encrypt their own files so that people in their own organization cannot access them to begin with? Delving into the history of power struggles within the Illuminati would take its own lifetime, Agent Ingram. So what now? You're sending me to DC in order to find out where Dynamine Station is, and then we're gonna pay them a little visit? Precisely. You'll once again be paired with Agent Lana Zavich. She must have finished her reconnaissance mission in the area. I'll signal her in. It's Alexia! Nice to see you again, Anthony. Has it been ten years already? So, you managed to get past Norad and strike us. I'll have you know that this station has been reinforced against such attacks. Yes, I'm aware of all the structural wonders of your fortress. After all, my spy has been very productive in his research. That can't be! I see you've made yet another friend, Agent Ingram. I'd actually be impressed if they were any more real than your own existence. So you fired a missile or something on the top of the fortress, expecting to get me right before I was departing to my next location? I was hoping that we'd hit you in that annoying pilot of yours. Funny how you agent types really cling to them, but I'm more interested in hearing if my other plan worked. You should realize that your missile... plan... <coughs> I see you've already met a friend of mine, Anthony. We've created a nanotech virus based on MG-12's concept. Not the same, of course, but we just had to find a very large prime number and multiply. It will take them quite a while to crack that code. She. And yet you aren't showing any symptoms. Well, I must thank you for proving my remaining dissuading scientists that you indeed seem to be immune to the virus. But I can assure you that we will find a way to get you as well. Ran out of poisonous gas? <laughs> Don't tempt me. You should make your humanist left in this world comfortable, Anthony. Once we've taken care of MJ-12 and whatever creeps the Illuminati still keeps in the closet, I'll send my augmented military all over the world. You might as well get ready for a comic backlash, Alexia. We're going to move on to MJ-12, right after we've discovered the location of your precious station in the Arctic Ocean. 
Oh, you're gonna take a swim? <laughs> it will take you a lot of guts to believe that MJ-12 is not going to retaliate anytime soon. It would take them all firepower in the world to find my station. And even if they did that, what I have right here would make sure that there wouldn't be a world left for them to control. Should have expected a spy in here. Not paranoid enough, it seems. <coughs> but it's not all lost. I really wish I could have done something to prevent this. No harm done from your part, Agent Ingram. <coughs> but you must not forget your mission. Access my computer with the login Ace Stafford and password Evolve or Die. You can download the decryption tool I made for the Illuminati document. Give it to Lana when you get the chance. It shouldn't take too long for her to figure out how to use it. <laughs> get to the Lana Fortress. There's a transport that will take you to a nearby beach outpost. The transport can only be used once and you need to activate it from a hub nearby. The code to the controller console is 4483. And finally... <coughs> Take this nano key to open the access door to the service ladders. Thanks. Do you think there are any survivors? Even if there are, there won't be tomorrow. The station will be under a full lockdown for 24 hours, and then it will self destruct. The transport you're going to use is going to be the last resort out. And how are you going to do that? I've always taken the extra mile to ensure that I'm going to die on my own terms. I will self-detonate and the loss of a specific sensor inside me will trigger the self-destruction process of the fortress. It's a safety mechanism I installed on myself many years ago. I've heard that's nice. You may want to take a few steps back. <laughs> Goodbye, Agent Ingram. May you succeed in your mission. I appreciate your help. Farewell. On that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you next time in Day 6 Nihilum.